Okay, this is going to be a review of the Opus number 11. Um, I don't do reviews very often on that I put on HeadFi any longer because um, multiple reasons. One, I'm just not really that impressed. I'm, I pretty much got the goods that I want. Um, however, th th this is a this is a story of me seeing a photograph in a CanJam collection of photos, and at the this vendor's you know display was an item that I, I've never seen before uh, and it, it it jumped out at me because um, it is a it is a USB DAC that works with Android or iPhones um, it has its own amplification stage um, so it's got an amp um, and it's got a DAC a good DAC a very good DAC um, and it's got its own battery uh, so it doesn't drain the phone. The problem that I had with the Kozo Aegis, which I loved, was that it automatically drew from the phone, um, which made its practicality impractical. Uh, as good as it sounded, um, you you have to negotiate how much time you can be uh, away uh, with your phone because it's going to suck up the battery. Um, this is what I was waiting for for quite a long time, uh, which is something that is small in its profile, um, very, very light. Um, th th this just looked like it was exactly what I was looking for. Now, I've done a review of the Mojo, the iDSD Micro, um, I own the Fio E12, the E18, I had the Kozo Aegis, I've had a lot of things, um, hi fi me DIY, I've done a lot of different stuff um, with my phone. Um, so, I'm like on this eternal hunt now if you're looking at this you see this this is this is very small this is not a big deal there is a very nice DAC inside here there's a good battery that'll last you about eight hours inside here um, there's an amplification stage that is good enough to drive um, I believe the impedance for the EX 1000s is like 32 or it's not 16 like most of the Sony's. This has actually got a higher one. Um, this jumped out at me right away because it's, look at it. Um, it's smaller than an E18. It's less powerful than an E18. It's smaller than an IDSD Micro and it's a lot less powerful than an IDSD Micro. It's smaller than a Mojo uh, and it's a lot less powerful than a Mojo. Now, I don't wear over ears when I go out with this thing. So that is, if I can, you know, I've got power. I've got a DAC and I've got a battery. If there's one of those things that I can negotiate, it would be um, the power because mm, some headphones don't need them. I can drive the MA900s with this one. Um, a good DAC is something I don't want to negotiate because what's the point? I could use a phone. Um, and, uh, um, a battery is not optional because it'll suck the battery out of this. So of the three things that I can give a little bit to, it would be um, the amp stage. I need it to, to be amped, um, of course, because of the, the lack of power that a regular phone has. But I can I can accept a little bit less um, in that. So I've got something that's very thin. Um, it's very light. It's got a very good DAC. Um, it's got its own battery. Uh, here's the package. It comes with a warranty card. It comes with a... Uh, user's manual it's pretty simple um, comes with this which I'll show you in a second comes with a gel pad inside comes with a cable it says no charge uh, so I assume that this is just to plug into a computer USB and to use this as your uh, your your DAC uh, it's got a charging cable this doesn't have a stick on so apparently you can charge with this so that's what comes with it charging cable uh, USB cable that is for music not for charging uh, a gel pad and then you've got the literature that comes with it and, and that's what that is uh, the really good thing about this thing is until you know the, the Fio E18 I loved uh, partly because it had a great cable this is nine nine centimeters nine millimeters um, it's very very small and when you know portability is an issue this becomes a, a huge issue too so plug that in plug that in and now we've got 
uh, a very, very small thing here. It's no big deal. Put this in my pocket. Bam, bam, bam. Um, it's rugged. It's well built. It's got a cable that's so small it's really not going to get in my way or get hooked on anything. It's also a proper USB cable so it's properly shielded. It's probably got like that aluminum foil that wraps around the cable so that you're not a slave to all of the outside signals that are running through most people's homes like Wi-Fi and other things that can interfere with or degrade uh, the quality of the signal that comes out of the phone, the host, and goes into the device, the DAC, uh, and then goes out the headphones. Now the interesting thing about this is, and what I would also tell you, um, this phone is on. No? Okay. Let me turn this on. Wait a second for that. Um, there is no volume on this. There is no... Uh, there's there, there are no switches whatsoever on this item. Um, it's got an automatic switch um, that is activated when you plug in your headphones. When you unplug your headphones, it's no longer on. So this the on-off switch is, is the headphones. I think that's genius. Um, I like that a lot. Um, let me go ahead and get in here. Now of note is... So this is Neutron. And... This is important right here, audio hardware. Now, if you can see right now, if you see that, uh, it says, you know, RMB7 plus Neon. This is basically the the, the phone's gear. Um, it is connected, however, it's not turned on yet. So if you look at that right there, uh, and see the open SLES is the DRV. And now I plug this in, when I do, it's going to ask me for permission, and I do. I don't want H ray. I don't want that. And now, if you look at that, it says the bit. Um, this is now, and also the frequency out is the 44. It's not the 48 that that Android puts and enforces on you. Um, so it works seamlessly with Android. The sound quality of this is, is outstanding. It's the reason that I'm doing this video right now because this thing is small, it's light, it'll fit in your pocket, it's got its own amp, it's got a very good DAC, uh, and it's got its battery so it's not going to suck the battery out of my phone like the Kozoa Aegis did. It's not huge like the IDSD Micro so that I can't actually put it in my pocket. It doesn't have a volume control system like the Mojo that's going to maybe blow my drivers like I almost did twice with that item. Um, D describing a DAC, as a lot of people will say to you, um, they, they'll say you know different things. If you look at a, a DAC's you know data sheet, most uh, except for the extreme low end and the extreme high end where there might be just a drop roll off, everything between the audible range, which let's say between 15 and 20, 15 hertz to 20 kilohertz, it should be ruler flat. Um, any DAC that's doing anything other than that is really not doing its job. It's supposed to be a, a converter. Unless there's a DSP inside, it's supposed to be converting a digital signal into an analog signal. And it's not supposed to be coloring it at the DAC stage uh, in any way. Um, and this, this one doesn't. It sounds, however, um, and this is just opinion, that it's got... It doesn't have a DSP, but it, it's got such a clarity in the treble uh, that it's it's got a, a fantastic appeal and th th these are the EX1000s and they're they're notoriously kind of bright so that would seem to be a bad combination between the brightness of the EX1000 and also a DAC that seems to be highlighted in the upper regions however it's not it's not like that at all the the detail retrieval is 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 fantastic it is the reason that I'm doing this video right now uh, and I'm going to post it on HeadFi as a review because there's nobody that's reviewed this item yet. There are people that are constantly asking me about something that will work with a phone that doesn't drain their battery, that has high quality sound, um, and uh, has got some amp power so it's, they, they can listen to stuff louder than they would outside of their phone. Um, but they don't want something big and bulky. And to, to, 
to some people that's that they don't hear that they just don't get it they don't get that some people just want to put this thing in their pocket and 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 walk away um it's uber simple there's no there's no switches there's no anything um on this thing it's completely it's very small um the reason that I'm doing this review is because there is no review on HeadFi of it. There is no review that I've seen on the internet, um, so I'm doing it. Again, a DAC shouldn't really have any effect on the sound. People say some are bright. I do agree that Wolfson DAC, the WM8470, I believe, has got a kind of analogish type tube sound in my to my ears. So they do have signatures, but it, it's not reflected in graphs. So. You know, am I parroting something that I heard somebody else say? Because I'm sure other people have said that that has that kind of a sound. So maybe I'm saying that because someone else said that. Because uh, a graph doesn't bear that out. Uh, I'm sure that this thing on a graph that I've never seen, it looks just like a Mojo does, which is looks like ruler flat, has a drop off maybe before the subaudible, and in the in the in the in the highs beyond the human hearing range. So it would look like a and then a, a, a rapid into nothing like a, a giant cliff in the ocean except everything that's on the ruler area is within the audible so a DAC really uh, is is supposed it, it's a digital to analog converter that's all it does um, the the challenge that I've had is I've wanted something that did that um, interfaced with my my Android um, and nothing did that the mojo if you go into anybody that's watching this right now, go into the Neutron Audio Hardware settings and try to select um, direct uh, driver, um, a direct DAC. Now that would be going into here, going into Audio Hardware. And this is a huge point right here that I gotta really get across to people. This selection right here, direct USB driver, allow direct access to the USB device to bypass possible OS output format limitation. That means that if your Android is putting out and forcing, like uh, there's something called Audio Finger and ALSA, which is the Android's um, music handling protocol and system, um, and it it will push stuff out of your phone at at 48. Um, that's pretty much Allison Audio Fingers. That's what it does. Um, so you're pushing it out at that and then you're sending it to your device um, at 48 and then it's resampling it to 44 or 44.1 or whatever. Um, the more modifications that you have in the chain before you start to actually tweak the signal if you use an EQ, the worse it is because you really don't have a zero point reference. Um, so I always, when I use the Mojo, I had to use generic driver. I had to select this one. Use generic audio drive for greater compatibility. Um, however, when I use generic driver uh, and I go up to here, um, it's not. It won't show me the Mojo because it's not using the Mojo um, directly. If I use the Mojo directly and use direct driver, it'll sound like uh, the Chipmunks. It sounds like it's fast forwarding. Um, if somebody's you know got that, they can leave a message inside and say. I just did this two days ago. Again, I got the mojo of that friend. Everybody's got the thing now. Um, to listen to, compare this, and also to my IDSD. It, it still does it, even with Marshmallow. It did it with KitKat. It does it with Marshmallow. I can't, I can't use it like this says the bit right here. I am using this DAC right now. It's frequency 44.1. That's sending it out like that into this. And this is going to do it to 32-bit because that's what the Opus 11 does. Uh, it sounds fantastic. It's integrating with my phone seamlessly. Um, it's got a very small form factor. Um, it is, make sure I haven't hit any buttons, hardware gain, audio focus, uh, generic driver. See, I touched it, so it did that. I don't need a generic driver. So I'm using the regular one. Now get out of here. And I'm playing it. There's 44.1 right there. I'm done. Um, if I'm going to spend money for an item that's expensive uh, and is doing a lot, I'd like it to do it as good as it can. And the problem with the Mojo was uh, every time I wanted to hear the Mojo 
purely. Um, I couldn't because it wouldn't work with my Note 4. Um, does the Mojo sound great? It sounds fantastic. Um, however, the way that it's created with all the taps and everything, it, it's, it's a complicated piece of kit. Um, and integrating that with stuff that's got standardized interfacing, uh, it doesn't really work that way. So if you've got a phone and you want something that um, is going to plug into it, it's going to recognize it, and you're going to be able to lean on it. It's going to it's going to be the de facto, um, in facto, DAC, um, and this is now the DAC. My audio is being strictly hosted on this, and you know I can look at it on the screen, and it's being sent by this very nice, very short USB cable to the DAC that is taking care of it completely, the and it is amplifying it itself. Um, and I can control the amplification through the volume buttons on here. It, it, it is the most seamless interaction between an Android phone uh, and an amp DAC that I've ever used. Um, and so I'm doing this review because I'm, I'm, I'm kind of blown that this is not, uh, you know, the, the MDR 7550s, which are by Sony, and then I've also listened to with this. Uh, there, I don't think there was a review on that. The ASG 2.5s, there was no review on that. Uh, there's been a lot of items that i found that are absolutely fantastic, uh, and nobody's actually reviewed them because nobody did a tour or a hype train or whatever. Um, this is, I guess, supposed to be about $250. Uh, is it worth that? Oh, fuck yeah, um, for, for a few reasons. One... Uh, the quality of the sound is fantastic. Again, a DAC should be ruler flat. This specialty of this one in particular, what I think that this one, if it's got its merits, if we're going to start to say that DACs have unique properties, like a like a Wolfson has a uh, warmer sound, I would say that this DAC sounds very, very good at detail retrieval, which is the thing that got me with the Mojo, was that it was playing back all of the music that was in there, like that I've not heard very often. This is absolutely fantastic. Um, do I compare this to the Mojo? Uh, yes, I do. In power? No. This does not compare to the Mojo. In quality of sound? Mm, now, before you roll your eyes, let's remember now, when you get past the age of, what, 22, your ears start to degrade slowly over time, so by the time you're in your 30s or 40s or however old you are watching this video, your hearing is not as good as when you were younger, so even if something has got a measured improvement or a distortion. The, the distortion on this has got to be very low because I can hear details and distortion is the detail destroyer. If I can hear a good you know, clarity and resolution then that means that the distortion level is low. I don't, I'm not looking at specs or graphs because I don't need to because it sounds so damn good in, in what I think are the finest single dynamic driver IEMs ever made which is the Sony EX1000s. Um, these are absolutely fantastic. These are detail monsters um, and they pair with this beautifully. This sounds absolutely fantastic and it's why again for the third time that I'm actually doing a video and doing a review and I'm actually going to post it on HeadFi because it's absolutely fantastic. Do I recommend it? I highly recommend it. If you've got an Android phone uh, it's going to it's gonna plug right in. Uh, you're good to go. It's, it's not strong enough for over ears. It's designed for IEM but if you're portable like this uh, and you use IEMs um, I think you would you would be advised to do this. Um, one thing to note, pull this out um, and it's off. You should turn your phone on first and plug this together first and then plug it in. It seems to have the best um, results as far as battery goes. It doesn't seem like it's affecting my phone's battery whatsoever. Um, in other scenarios it seemed like it was starting to drain my phone but it and that way it does not. So that would be the way that I'd say it. Do I recommend this? I do. I th I'm going to give this 4.5 stars. The only reason I'm going to take a 0.5 stars is because it's not powerful enough to allow me to listen to my over years strongly. Otherwise, it's a fantastic item. Can't believe nobody's reviewed it. Love it. Very, 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 very nice piece of kit. Good job by the bit.